the last Monday of January. And in this Life Minutes video, we're going to finish up our look at Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 through 48, Jesus dealt with two delicate, difficult areas for many people. He talked about retaliation and loving your enemies. Why is this difficult? Well, all of us have encountered people who have been unkind to us, have been rude, or just simply seem to make life difficult. You may work with them, you may go to school with them, you just may have encountered them at some time in your life. This passage found in Matthew 5 reminds me of another passage written by the Apostle Paul in Romans 12, where he encouraged us to never seek revenge on someone, but to allow God to handle the situation. That guards us from becoming bitter or becoming vengeful when we just hand it over to God when we have been wronged. The reality is too that when someone has really hurt us, the first reaction that some of us have is that we want to get back at that individual. And Jesus is trying to help us to not get into that mindset here in Matthew chapter 5. Now remember, the Sermon on the Mountain are Jesus' teachings on what a follower of His is to look like and how we are to live to bring glory and honor to Him. So let me just share with you a few thoughts taken from this passage in Matthew 5. We don't have time to break down every single verse and discuss them. But let me begin by telling you what Jesus said right out the gate. He said, the first thing was this, do not retaliate. Again, we've just mentioned Romans chapter 12. In verse 39 of Matthew 5, Jesus said, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. Let me tell you what Jesus isn't saying here. Jesus is not saying that if someone tries to harm your family that you should not uh, stand up to them. He's not saying that we should not speak out when there is injustice. What he is saying though is that if we've been wronged or insulted by someone, don't seek revenge. God can handle things far better than we can. So he wants us to get it into our mind immediately that if we have been hurt, don't seek getting back at that person. What can end up happening is we can become almost obsessed with trying to ruin that person's life or say or do something to get back at them. Jesus' point, don't do that. A second thing that he said was this, choose to show Jesus to them even when we have been wrong. He talked about that in verses 40 and 41, about going the extra mile. One of the hardest things to do is when someone has been unkind to us is to show kindness, to show a little mercy and grace. But we need to do that. Why? Well, it's good for us because it keeps us focused on reflecting Christ to others. And it helps us from becoming bitter or angry or vengeful. We are, taking, we are trusting God to take care of us when we do that. It gets our minds off of getting back at someone and instead reflecting Jesus. Is that hard to do? Sure. But with God's help, we can do it. Now there is a third point that Jesus throws out to us in these verses. It's found in verse number 44. He says to love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And an enemy is just explained this way. It's anyone who's hostile towards us, whatever the reason might be. So if someone has wronged us or hurt us, let's be honest, praying for them is not always the easiest thing to do, is it? And when he says to pray for them, we are not to pray that they get a flat tire or lose their job. 
We are to pray that God would work in their life, that maybe they would see the error of their ways, or that God would, if they don't know Christ, that God would bring them to salvation. And in praying, we are, need to pray for our attitude too. But we're to pray for them. And let's be honest, that's a challenge. When I've done this, I find that it's hard to be bitter and angry at someone if I'm spending time praying for them. I may not like what they've done to me. In fact, they may be downright wrong. But when I take them before the throne of God, it changes my attitude. It does not mean that there may be a time when we don't have to confront them or a situation. But even if we are in, a, in, a, in, in that, where we have to confront someone, we're to do it with grace and humility to show the love of Christ. Let me close with just one last thought. In a couple of the translations of this passage found in Matthew chapter 5, not only are we told to pray for our enemies and to love them, but we are to bless them. Now, to be honest, the oldest Greek manuscripts of this passage of Matthew don't have that phrase, you know, bless your enemies. But throughout the scriptures, we know that blessing someone is not unbiblical or wrong. So even though not every translation mentions that we're to bless our enemies, there's actually nothing wrong with doing that. And you know what it means to bless someone? It means to wish them well. It's to tell the person that has been less than kind to us, hey, have a great day. And uh, not only will that attitude blow the mind of the person we're saying it to, but above all, it helps our attitude. And it just might challenge the attitude and actions of the person being rude or nasty. Well, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount has so many things to say to us. I'd encourage you to study Matthew chapters 5 through 7 and see what God says to you and how we can apply the words of Jesus, the greatest teacher ever, to our daily lives. This is Scott from Oak Ridge Community Church. Thanks for watching. Have a great week.